Hey guys, how's it going? I hope everybody's doing well out there today. In this video, again, we're going to take a step back and talk about why you might not want to get into self-hosting. Now, look, I know that self-hosting has a lot of advantages, but it's important to weigh the pros and cons before making a decision. And in this video, we'll be discussing some of the potential downsides of self-hosting. Now, just so you know, this is only one half of a pair of videos in which we cover the pros and cons of self-hosting, and the other video will be linked in the video description. Also, these are both going to be kind of like talking head style videos, so feel free to minimize this screen and keep doing whatever else you're, it is you're doing while I give my thoughts on the pros and cons of self-hosting. Also, do me a favor and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. So one of the biggest downsides to self-hosting can be the initial cost. You may need to purchase hardware if you don't already have it available to you, which can be expensive. Of course, there are options to get inexpensive secondhand hardware, but that in itself can have its own set of kind of underlying issues. Depending on where you got that hardware, you don't know what it's been through and how hard it's been worked. So there may be some performance issues related to say degraded hardware due to excessive use and that sort of thing. So that's definitely something to keep in mind when you're talking about buying secondhand hardware. Now, of course, you'll also need to pay for electricity and internet access. And while I'm sure that you probably have both of these already, those costs could go up by adding a home lab into the mix. And if you need to upgrade your hardware in the future, that of course will bring another expense to keep things going. Now, another concern is reliability. Now we talked about the potential reliability issues very briefly about buying secondhand hardware, but there's also the reliability of your internet and your power. So if one of those goes out or both of those happens to go out, your applications may be unavailable depending on uh, how you're accessing them. If you're accessing from inside your network and your internet's down, you should be fine. If you're trying to access them from outside your internet or outside your, your network and the internet goes down, not gonna happen. And of course, if your power's out, that's a no-go anyway. Now, going back to the hardware reliability part of things, if your hardware fails, you'll probably need to replace it before you can get your applications back up and running, which kind of goes back to our previous point of cost. Now, I've had all of these things happen and getting things back up and running myself or waiting for the power to come back on or the internet to come back on was definitely more stress than I happened to want in that particular moment. Also, if one of your services crashes and you don't have a good backup strategy in place, then you're kind of boned. Uh, all of your data is just gone forever. So it's super, super important to have a good backup strategy in place. And that, depending on your setup, can go anywhere from being very, very simple to very, very complex. And again, that's going to depend on your initial setup, both from a hardware and a software perspective. Now, speaking of some complex things, self-hosting can be very complex. It doesn't have to be, but depending on your needs and your experience level, it definitely can be. You'll need to set up and maintain your own hardware and software, and this can be a challenge, especially if you're not familiar with information technology or IT. And if something goes wrong, you'll be the one responsible for fixing it. You may also need to figure out how to securely access your applications from outside your network if you plan to share your access with friends or family or want access to your applications while you're on the go. Which kind of brings us to our next point of security. Security is always a major concern with self-hosting or hosting really anywhere, but specifically here with self-hosting. You'll be the one responsible for securing your hardware and your software and your network and things like that. This also includes, like I mentioned, remote access methods if you want or need to access your applications from outside your home network. And again, this can be a challenge, especially if you're not familiar with best security practices. And if your system's compromised, your data could be at risk. Bad actors could ransomware your system or just delete your operating system for the and files just for the lulls. And here are some additional thoughts on the downsides of self-hosting. Uh, the first one is that it can be time consuming. Setting up and maintaining a self-hosted server can be a lot of work and you'll need to spend time installing and configuring software, keeping up with security updates and monitoring your systems for problems. Also, if something goes wrong with your server, Again, you'll be the one responsible for troubleshooting and fixing the problem. And this, again, can be difficult if you're not familiar with the software or hardware you're using. One of the ways that you can remedy that, though, is by having a good logging solution on your setup that will just kind of keep tabs on what's going on and give you something to reference in order to go back and see what went wrong and possibly even how to fix it. One of the other things that's kind of a downside to self-hosting is scaling. Maybe you've just got a little single board computer that hosts a few little applications and eventually you want to start hosting more and you want to start adding more and you want to start doing more and there's more and there's more and there's more. 
Well, eventually there's a good chance that that piece of hardware that you've got isn't going to be enough. So you may have to look at buying more hardware or, or figuring out a way to upgrade your existing hardware in such a way that you can start adding more stuff to it. And of course, doing things like that will add cost and complexity to your setup, especially if you've got things uh, running on your system that are important to keep up and running all of the time. Um, so that may inc incur some downtime on your network, which may complicate things. So there, there are some complexities that you have to consider when you're doing this kind of stuff. Then you'll need to probably configure the hardware and the software to work uh, with this new upgrade. And that can also be very, very time consuming. So should you get into self-hosting? Well, that depends. If you're willing to invest the time and money and you're comfortable with the complexity and security risks, then self-hosting can be a good option. But if you're not sure or don't have the resources or, or the, the time to learn, then your better option might actually just be keep doing what you're doing and using the third-party applications that just work. Now, just a little side note here that isn't in my script, and that is I self-host quite a bit of stuff on this, this rack behind me over here that you can't really see. However, there are still third-party services that I use because, again, they just work. And sometimes integrations can be complicated with other third-party systems. Um, but oftentimes, if you're using multiple third-party systems, they're often configured to work together very, very easily. However, in a self-hosting situation, sometimes getting your self-hosted thing to work with a third-party uh, paid thing can be much more difficult and the troubleshooting and the APIs and all of that kind of stuff can add layers of complexity that even I'm not willing to deal with. So I very often for certain things use a third party service just because it's not worth my headache or my time. So again, while this is in no way meant to be an exhaustive list of why you might not want to get into self-hosting, I hope this video has given you a better understanding of why you might not want to self-host your applications at home. Of course, if you have any questions or want to add something that I've missed, please leave those in the comment section down below. But with all of that said, I, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I do wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.